What is up, wrestling fans? Welcome to episode number 352 of the Smart Out Moments Smack Talk podcast. I'm your host, as always, Tony Mango, and this is the Hot Tags edition of the week, where I'll be breaking down some of the current events, the news, the gossip, the rumors, and pretty much anything else that I want to talk about that went down over the past couple of days in the world of professional wrestling. And I have to warn you about two things ahead of time. Number one, my allergies are bugging the hell out of me, so that's why I'm going to sound very, very nasally. And number two, not in a good mood. Not in a good mood at all right now. And it's not from outside stuff. I mean, you know, there's always normal stress. I'm never really the type that gets a chance to to wind down. You've heard probably by now that I get, like, very little sleep. Different stuff like that. But this one's WWE related. This one's about the main topic that we're going to be talking about here. And that is Braun Strowman turning heel. I'm going to hold off on that, though, because, spoiler alert, fuck WWE for the way that they are booking some of this shit recently. That's what I'm going to be saying. So, <laughs> before we get into that, though, let's talk about some other things. Uh, I will talk about this first topic and get it out of the way, sort of, because I know that it's a spoiler and it's the type of thing that some people don't necessarily want to... Uh, be knowing the information behind. But uh, if you don't want to know what happened at the NXT UK tapings, skip forward a little bit. Uh, I don't know if anybody wants to drop a timestamp or something like that after a word or something like that. But we have our first NXT UK women's champion. And her name is, and I will give you another couple seconds that you don't have to listen to this if you don't want to know the spoilers, five, four, three, two, and one, Rhea Ripley. She defeated Dakota Kai, Tony Storm, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, in a tournament that they had done, and kind of confused a little bit because uh, we had gone through the whole thing with Australia, New Zealand, and whatnot. And we try to figure out what was going on with uh, the NXT UK situation like that. Our first NXT UK champion for the women is Australian. Uh, I guess it's technically like a Commonwealth or whatever like that is. I don't know. I would have thought that they would have gone with somebody who was directly in the UK. Then again, we had Drew Gulak fighting for the United Kingdom Championship and who knows. Um, Rhea Ripley, I haven't seen too much of. I had seen her in last year's Mae Young Classic and I thought that she showed a little bit of promise to her. I'm sure by now she's gotten better than what she had done before, and she's young, and she isn't bad looking, and she looks like she could be pretty big, like, not big, like, overweight, but big, like, tall, and muscular, and fit, and everything like that, so, sure, you know, why not, uh, very curious why we still don't have tag team champions yet, and they still have not said where any of this is going to end up because we have a whole set of tapings before these tapings. And now we're backlogged really far. If this doesn't start airing until like 2019 or something like that, we're going to have like, I don't know, like an entire year's worth of tapings that we already know what happens. And that's the type of insanity that hurts impact wrestling. WWE just seems to think that that's okay, and I don't understand that. I am not going to be as interested in the Mae Young Classic now that I know who is in the finals of the Mae Young Classic. And I'm not going to be as interested in watching the NXT UK show because I know everything that happens all at this point. And yeah, I guess you could say technically they go, well, we don't want you to read spoilers, but it's like, you're not movies. You are a results-based thing. And... That type of mentality just doesn't work out. It's just, it's really stupid to me. And I don't want to watch something that they're referring to things that have happened back in, you know, June of 2018, if it's like March of 2019. It's just, it's out of date. And it's just, I don't know, it's done, it seems weird to me. So now we know the NXT UK Women's Champion, yet we don't even know when the first episode of the NXT UK show is going to even air. It's so weird to me. Uh... Okay, that's out of the way. Uh, for some reason, you're listening to this and you didn't want to know the spoilers and stuff, then let's uh, get into the other kind of stuff like that. But I guess this is your timestamp. There you go. Let's talk about how Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne will be in 
WWE 2K19. Or I guess technically that's pretty much all we have to talk about. Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne will be in WWE 2K19. Not surprised that those are the two that are going to be in the uh, in the game because really, you know, you're going to put Wolfgang in there? No, I don't think so. Those are the two that have won the United Kingdom Championship and those are the two that are the most prominently featured uh, people in that whole division. So, yeah, makes perfect sense to me. Good thing that they're in there too because they have put on some great, great matches and they deserve it. Let's talk about Goldberg. His Twitter got quote-unquote hacked you, you never really know for sure but i would assume that this probably would be and started tweeting out a bunch of stuff about like uh the president and that uh got the fbi to get involved so he's dealing with that kind of stuff that's not all that fun uh that's just a random side thing there's not really too much to talk about when it comes to that obviously if people tweet out stuff that goes against the government they become people that are on like watch lists and stuff like that because Hey, well, you know, why wouldn't they research that kind of stuff? Speaking of tweets, though, we have to talk about something else. We have to talk about Jason Sensation, which you might not even know who he is necessarily. But if you don't know who he is, well, he is the guy who was Owen Hart in the parody of DX and the Nation of Domination from 1998, 99, something like that, where I don't think he's really done anything after that. I think he... He went through, like, the independent scene, and he was just kind of, like, you know, working in those kind of different venues and stuff like that. But he got his uh, extra 15 minutes of fame today because he tweeted out, uh, I'm going to read his tweet, I got my gun through security and will shoot myself in the head and kill myself during tonight's Raw in Toronto. Don't you dare miss it. Thanks for the memories, WWE. After that, of course, he said, no, that was all supposed to be a joke. I'm fine. I'm sorry. Uh, the police were called, as they should have been, because you don't mess around with the idea of a mass shooting right after a mass shooting just happened. Whether or not the whole point is supposed to be to kill yourself, it's still not a good idea to do that. Idiot. It's the type of thing that you would think any reasonable person would go, yeah, probably not a good fucking idea. And in this environment where you can't make any kind of jokes without getting people butthurt and stuff like that, there still needs to be some ideas that you just go, you know, maybe this isn't necessarily a joke and more so just me being stupid. Because what's the joke here? Like, what is the punchline to this kind of a joke? If that's supposed to be a joke, which, you know, I mean, lots of people say stuff and then they go, no, I was just joking. I was just joking. Uh, I don't see the joke behind it. Uh, you know, hey, I'm going to go kill myself and I'm going to bring a gun into an arena. Ha 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 ha. Like, what's so fucking funny about that? I just don't understand it. Uh, so I hope that he got arrested or something like that, because when you do stuff like that and you cause some public uproar and you potentially screw up the police in the area that could be attending to other things that are actual problems and stuff, you deserve to get some kind of punishment like that. Now, I'm not the type of person that says that we should have the Twitter police attack every single person for every single thing, but I do think that there's a line, and when there have been so many mass shootings and everything, you don't mess around with stuff like that. And at the very least, if you're going to, have a punchline, you jackass, you know? Uh, anyway, WWE Evolution, if you haven't gone through a single episode of any kind of WWE material and had your fix of, isn't it great that we're having the all-women's pay-per-view stuff? Well, let's talk about that. Isn't it great that they're having an all-women's pay-per-view? Yes, it is. And wouldn't it be great if AJ Lee were to show up? Well, as much as I think that it's an absolute no-go, there have been more things going around the internet about how she might actually pop up. Uh, she won this poll that they had put up of, you know, who would you like to see return by like an overwhelming margin? I forget the numbers. It was like something like 70% or something like that. And supposedly now, of course, take it with a grain of salt. You never know if any of these rumors are true or not. Supposedly, even before that poll, they reached out to her and she might have expressed interest. Now, if that's the case and AJ Lee does show up at Evolution, who could she really fight? Well, we have Alexa Bliss already 
shacked up with Trish. I'm assuming that Nikki Bella type thing happens with Ronda Rousey. If not, I'm assuming Ronda Rousey versus Mickey James. But maybe we get Ronda Rousey versus AJ Lee. Uh, if not, maybe AJ is featured in some of that like multi-women type match. Maybe AJ fights Sasha Banks or Charlotte. Although I'm still thinking Charlotte versus Becky. But then again, you kind of can't tell what WWE plans on doing on anything because even if it's logical, it might not necessarily be the type of thing that they they necessarily want. I don't know. Realistically, though, I'm assuming AJ Lee is, if not a 100% no-go, at least something like a 90%. I really think if you go into this with those expectations that she's going to pop up, you're going to be disappointed. And I am ruling that out in my brain. In my mind, it's just not happening. It'd be great if it did happen. And I'd love to see AJ Lee back. I thought AJ Lee was great in the ring and a fun character and super cute. So there's nothing negative as far as I'm concerned with her coming back. And that's against whoever she ends up going up against. I mean, they could put her with like, uh, put her against Asuka and it doesn't matter anymore because Asuka's not undefeated or anything like that. But hey, you know what? That could be a fun match, that kind of a thing. Uh, I just don't think it's going to happen. I think that it's wishful thinking and that it's to get people to be really, really hyped up about Evolution. And then once they start announcing more of the matches on the card and AJ Lee just doesn't end up being a part of that, then they go, yeah, but aren't these matches great? That kind of a thing. You know, I just, I want to get my hopes up. Don't want to hold your breath. So let's talk about WWE Story Time. The second episode of Season 3 was called How Embarrassing, and I think that that might have been the way that they were just uh, referring to this episode because it sucked. It was not funny. Uh, here are the five stories. I'm just going to spoil it to you because this is a skip it. Uh, and I got a feeling that at this point, story time itself is just a skip it because it doesn't seem like they're ever really all that good, at least in my mind. Maybe you love it. If you do, great. Glad that you enjoy it. I don't. Uh, we had Rattled, which was Randy Orton on the military base when he was in the military, of course, you know, instead of him just hanging out there. And he picks up a rattlesnake, gets bitten by it, and that's the end, basically. Uh, thumbs down. Not funny. There was Homecoming Hardships, which was that Alexa Bliss had messed up her neck after falling during a cheerleading... Uh, what, what do they call those? Cheerleading... It's not practice, obviously. It's not a festival, like a, a meet or something. Uh recital I, I don't know what you call those things uh she was doing cheerleading stuff she fell she messed up her neck she won homecoming queen and she had a brace on and it was just like wow isn't it awkward to be homecoming queen and have a neck brace well you know that's about it uh cesaro was the focus of the third story if the suit fits which was that he used to have that tear away suit and sometimes he didn't I remember to undo the button and ah man it's tough to tear away the tear away suit isn't that funny not really I'm a man was Gregory Helms talking about how Edge farted one time and how he rolled out of the car and Vince McMahon was like oh are you a man you couldn't handle a fart ha 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 so that was you know what it is and then Diaper Duty was Kofi Kingston talking about how his son crapped all over him one time. Now, I will say I laughed at this one, and I didn't laugh at him for any of the stuff that had to deal with, like, the story itself, really. I laughed at one little touch, which was that they had people slipping on a whole bunch of shit, and one of them was Titus O'Neil, and he did the slide from the Greatest Royal Rumble. That made me laugh. Everything else in this whole rest of this episode? No. <laughs> so hey uh skip it i just told you everything about that and you don't need to waste 20 minutes so let's talk about the big one here braun Strowman turned heel on monday night raw uh kevin owens quit by the way too uh, i think that's obviously just a storyline and that would have been the main story that i would have been talking about you know oh where are they gonna go with kevin owens here instead let's talk about braun Strowman, and i'm gonna hold back a little bit on this because I'm going to be writing something up for Bleacher Report about this, and I'm going to hopefully be able to 
present my argument in a more, uh, I guess, like a, a more condensed and better fashion than I what I will do on a podcast. But let's just let everything loose for a little bit. This is fucking stupid. Absolutely fucking stupid. And it's the type of thing that makes me go, why the fuck do I watch WWE if they piss me off? And I know a lot of people, they have this argument where they go, well, if you don't like it, then why you keep watching it? And stuff like this makes me go, yeah, why do I? Because I try to look on the bright side of things when it comes to WWE or anything like that for that matter. And if I like something, I really like whatever it is. Unless it's something that's just like, meh, you know, whatever. But if I'm a fan of something, I'm a fan of it. I want to enjoy it. I want to have fun with it. Terminator 2 is my favorite movie of all time. Terminator 1, damn good movie. Not my favorite, but damn good. One of my favorites. Terminator 3, sucked balls. Terminator Salvation, step up from that, but still not all that good. Terminator Genesis, I keep hearing all these great things from James Cameron about, oh, this is probably the story that I would have done, and this is like the, the real sequel to Terminator 2, and it's really great. Suck balls. At this point, I look at the Terminator series and I go, wow, my favorite movie of all time is not something that I can depend on anymore because these future stories are garbage and they're just not worth my time. The first Transformers movie comes out and I had liked Transformers as a kid, but they were not like the thing that I was the biggest into. You know, I was into Power Rangers. I was into WWE, WWF at the time. I was into Batman, of course, my favorite superhero of all time, my favorite fictional character of all time being Batman. And, you know, I didn't really think that Transformers were like the coolest thing in the world, but I thought that they were pretty interesting. I had some of the toys, whatever. Uh, the movie comes out and I don't know if it was opening night or the night after opening night or something like that, but a couple of friends of mine, they go, hey, let's go see the Transformers movie. And I'm like, eh. I don't know, man. I don't know if it's really going to be all that good. I go to see it and I go, well, you know what? That was actually pretty fucking good. Like, that was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. So by the time Transformers 2 comes around, I go, I'm going to go see that opening night because that first movie, that really surprised me. That was the damn good movie. Not, you know, best picture material, but damn good. I enjoyed it. I had fun. Uh, the music was awesome. The visuals were pretty cool, you know, etc. Revenge of the Fallen comes out, sucks balls. And I go, you know what? Maybe the third one... They'll be able to course correct. They'll figure out what it is. Third one sucks. Fourth one comes around and I go, well, you know what? Maybe they learned their lesson after those two. Fourth one sucks. Then I was like, you know, I'm not spending any money on this anymore. I watched the fifth one, even t more terrible. It's just these movies keep getting worse and worse. So am I going to see Bumblebee in the theaters? Not unless I can go for free. That's for sure. And, uh, you learn your lesson from this kind of stuff. That's what I'm trying to get at here. The Star Wars situation. If you've been following Fanboys Anonymous, you know by now, I fucking don't like The Last Jedi. And it really ruined Star Wars for me. Because there's problems with the prequels, there's problems with the originals, but a lot of people don't want to acknowledge that. But The Last Jedi was the type of thing where Force Awakens comes out, I've got my issues with it, and I go, ah, I don't know, I don't really like some of this, but hey, you know what? Maybe they're going somewhere that's fun. And then The Last Jedi comes out and it goes, oh, no, they're not. Not at all. They clearly don't know what they're doing. Or if they do know what they're doing, it's just stupid. They're taking it in a wrong direction that I don't think is great. I don't think is entertaining. I don't think it's fun. I don't like it at all. And, you know, by now, Episode Nine is coming out at uh, some point next year. And I don't care as much about it anymore. And that's a shame because I loved the Star Wars story. And it was the type of thing that I was kind of like, you know, you'd hear like the Force theme and I'd be like, oh man, I'm getting chills because this is like one of my favorite series ever and all this other kind of stuff. And now I haven't been able to watch things that are Star Wars related because it's just like, I don't care. I haven't even gotten a chance to, well, I've gotten a chance to, but I haven't wanted to rewatch The Last Jedi a second time. Because I just don't want to, you know? And Braun Strowman's heel turn, basically what I'm getting at with that setup is, this is just another example of, I can try and I can try and I can try, 
to rationalize the way that WWE does certain things. And I can try to be optimistic that they're going to turn things around and stuff like that. And at SummerSlam, they did a couple things that I was just like, ah, that's really stupid and I really don't like that. But some of the other things are really good and I really like that. And I was all the way up until the end of the night. I was like, all right, well, I don't know if this is the right idea to do this whole Braun Strowman, Roman Reigns thing, but at least they're keeping, you know, some of this going forward with like the momentum of uh, him and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it's just one of those things where I was willing to, to give them the benefit of the doubt. And then he turns heel. He turns heel by attacking Roman Reigns and aligning 100% with Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre. Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins come out, and the three of them attack them. And then right afterward, they announce at the Super Showdown, it's going to be The Shield versus Braun Strowman, Dolph Ziggler, and Drew McIntyre. So Braun Strowman's a heel. Don't, don't think anything of this. Braun Strowman is a fucking heel now. You take the most over guy on the fucking roster who is getting cheered more than anybody in the entire company right now, and you turn him heel because it's more important to you that Roman Reigns has a heel to go up against and to beat, to look strong again, as if that's going to fucking work. Uh, it, it's, it, it boggles the mind because it's like, this is stupid. This is just flat out stupid. Roman Reigns is not getting cheered like that. And you want to turn a guy who's getting cheered, who's selling merchandise, which, by the way, if we try to use the argument that the merchandise is the reason why they don't want to turn people heel and stuff like that, if Braun is selling merchandise, which I think is probably the case, I mean, I can't imagine that he isn't, then why would you turn him heel and sacrifice that merchandise just in the hopes that maybe, maybe some people go, Oh, man, that's kind of shitty of Braun to do that. I'm going to cheer for Roman Reigns. After all these years, you haven't figured it out that that's not going to happen. And again, for people that are not following previous things, I like Roman Reigns. I want Roman Reigns to succeed as a heel or a babyface. But they are not going to get that result here. This is going to do... This is a projection. Here, this, this is what we're going to get. Braun Strowman comes out next week. He talks about how, fuck you, whatever... They get like Braun Strowman against Dean Ambrose or something like that. And he either beats him and he's a heel and whatever. And it, we continue this going forward over the next couple of weeks. And he's not fun anymore. And the crowd can't get behind him anymore because we're not supposed to. Or the crowd continues to cheer him and now boos the other baby faces that are going up against him, like a Dean Ambrose and a Seth Rollins, which makes them look worse and goes against the narrative. And then at Hell in a Cell, Braun Strowman continues to get cheered over Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns beats Braun Strowman and gets booed. And the event ends with people booing Roman Reigns again. And he's no more over as a baby face than he was before. But now Braun Strowman just looks like he was fed to him the same that what we did over and over and over again with John Cena. It's the same stupid thing. And then after that, then what do we do? We get Braun Strowman fighting people like Seth Rollins for the Intercontinental Championship or, God forbid, Bobby Lashley at WrestleMania or something like that. It's beyond stupid. And I hate this mentality behind this. And... They wouldn't have had to deal with this either if it would have been just one simple thing that they could have done. And this, of course, prevents him from turning heel because the heel turn is the stupid thing here. But hear me out. First off, you, you don't turn him heel. That's just what it is. But you can accomplish the same exact fucking thing by just doing this. All right. You want Braun Strowman to get one over on Roman Reigns. Okay, maybe you even want to book the Shield versus Strowman, Ziggler, and McIntyre. Maybe I'll even give you that. But you don't turn him heel. Instead, what you do is Braun Strowman gets tagged in, doesn't do anything. He lets Roman Reigns get beaten up. Shield comes out. They start fighting everybody. And then Braun Strowman, after McIntyre and Ziggler are celebrating, clotheslines the two of them, puts them out, and he just goes... I'm not aligned to fucking anybody. And then he gets cheered. 
And then you've got the most over baby face getting cheered even more than what you did before to a certain extent. Ugh. I hate this type of thing. And with the Becky Lynch situation and the Roman Reigns situation and now the Braun Strowman heel turn, it really makes me go, why do I want to dedicate so much time against this kind of thing? Why do I really want to watch nine hours a week or something of pro wrestling content when I know that I'm signing up for being frustrated for the next year or whatever it might be? It's not fun. You know? It pisses me off. I'm going to write more about this in my column. I'm going to start something new. It's going to be called WWE Hot Take, where I'm just going to be, like, ranting, essentially, because now, at this point, that's what it it requires. It requires me just cutting straight through it and just going, I'm pissed about this this week. You know, what? guess what grinds my gears, that type of thing. Because I guess that's how I'm going to get out my WWE content every week. You know, I've got commitments. I have to write up stuff about certain things. And it's not fun to watch this kind of stuff. And I can't be optimistic about a company that perpetually proves that they are too stubborn to learn a goddamn lesson. So yeah, I'm annoyed about this. And uh, man, what a perfect week to piss me off into all in because all in I don't know almost anything about some of these guys and that will end up being so much more fun because I'll just go into it and go like man all right let's see I don't know anything about Pentagon let's see what Pentagon can do and I'll probably have so much more fun with that it's so uh I don't know so rant temporarily over because I'm going to work on a couple other things and I'm going to potentially do something that actually makes me have some fun and get some joy out of it because Monday Night Raw was a little bit of a chore to get through and then it pissed me off at the end. I think I deserve to watch a movie that I think I will be pretty sure that I know will be fun and stuff like that or watch some stupid YouTube videos of like people cooking things that look tasty or, you know, anything that brings some kind of a joy where any of these companies would go, hey, people like certain things. Maybe we should give them more of what we like instead of going, you know what will piss them off? (laughs) Uh, All right, well, if you stuck around for the end of this rant and stuff like that and you want to continue to listen to them, you know, more and more and more rants because, hey, when it comes to the Brock Lesnar situation, they finally got rid of that. Now I don't have to deal with the Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns thing anymore. If I ran for that for two and a half years. Now I'm going to have to rant about the Braun Strowman heel turn for the next year or so. Uh, If you want to stay tuned for all that kind of stuff, what you can do is you can subscribe to the YouTube channel here and ring the little bell for notifications. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter at SmartOutMoment. And you can also, on top of that, uh, like the video, share the video, check out SmartOutMoment.com for everything else that's happening there. Um, I will be opening up a Discord, maybe, I mean, I have some of that figured out already, but again, this Braun Strowman thing just really makes me kind of go like, I don't even know how much I really want to talk about wrestling anymore and stuff. Uh, Champs Giving is something that I had posted in the Mega Maniacs about for, you know, that's a tournament that I was thinking about hosting sometime in like October, November. And uh, I don't know what else we got going on, but at least for later on this week, we're going to have predictions for All In. And then we're going to have the all-in post-show after the show on Saturday. And uh, then the week after that, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I might actually take off and not do a main event next week. If WWE has pissed me off enough, I might not want to talk about WWE all that much. So we'll see. But uh, we'll deal with that when we deal with that. Thank you for your support, everybody. Uh, Make sure you drop your comments below and tell me what you think. And if you also want to make sure that the lights stay on here and want to be motivating in a sense that, like, I am, you know, really losing my motivation for WWE here, one way to do that is to hit up the Patreon and to, uh, you know, request some topics by getting to that tier or something. But you could also do something like hit up the T Public or Redbubble merchandise shops and, you know, buy some stickers or some t-shirts or something like that because... You got the spare change you want to throw my way there's there's some ways that you can do that 
I don't know. We'll figure this out somewhere down the line. But for now, I'm going to peace out. I will talk to you guys uh, Wednesday or so like that. And I'll see you then. This has been another Smart Out Moment, and I'm being counted out. Ah!